Welcome back to the other issue. It is no news that uh, on those state governorship election, it's just a few hours away. But before then, let's look at the issues around the returning officer. The Independent National Electoral Commission has responded to the allegations of the PDP, saying it wants to undermine the Ondo election. INEC stated that it has the sole responsibility of appointing returning officers for elections and urged all candidates to have no fear as coalition officers must undertake an oath of neutrality and exhibit professionalism and ethical conduct. The PDP on those state governorship national campaign council had earlier rejected the appointment of Eitokwe Ogumboredi, okay, I must add Professor Eitokwe Ogumboredi as the chief returning officer of the election. The chairman of the council, and your state governor, Shei Makini, had stated that Ogumboredi is the kinsman of the candidate of the APC, that's Governor Rotimi Akiridolu. Joining us to discuss the dynamics around these accusations is Femi Lawson, a political analyst who is currently based who is currently in Ondo State. Let me not say based in Ondo State. Good evening, Femi Lawson. Good evening. Okay, let's quickly take a listen to what uh, the governor of Oyo State did say. Uh, was it yesterday or two days ago? Let's take a listen, then we'll come back. Next, you'll uh, go ahead and look for someone else. Um, he may not do anything, but know that once the uh, chief returning officer makes a pronouncement, then the next thing is you have to go to a tribunal. We don't want to go to a tribunal. We don't want uh, the people of uh, uh, Ondo State to be cheated. That's why we're saying to INEC that please go ahead and look for a returning officer that is neutral, that does not have any affiliation whatsoever with any of the uh, uh, candidates. Next. Welcome back. And uh, Femi Lawson, you just listened to that. Uh, what do you make out of that alarm raised by the governor of your state? Well, uh, alarm is, uh, and, uh, considered Please, can you speak up so that we can hear you, sir? ...to raise tensions when elections are coming, particularly sometimes when the likely outcome may not you know, go in their favor. It is unfortunate because election in the state has been characterized, you know, by spirit of tension and alarm. And for Governor Seima Kide to have come to raise such an unfounded, you know, allegation, you know, really takes on, you know, how sensitive some of our leaders are to future elections in Nigeria, because these are issues ordinarily <clears throat> that can lead to tension that can heighten the tension around the election because INEC have at no time made such pronouncements or even had such intention in the first place. Okay. Are you still there? Yes. Okay, good. Let's look at uh, the response of INEC now. You've responded to what uh, the issue is. But let's look at INEC's response. INEC says it's his sole responsibility. Uh, do you agree with that statement? Because people would say, right, you have the power to do that. But is it not it all is, stakeholders? It, it, is, it is purely within the power of INEC as constitutionally empowered, you know, to determine who supervises any election. Either as attorney officer, either as police you know, officer, either as assistant, or even as regular electoral commissioner. I don't think it has become the power or duty, you know, of uh, the political party to determine who to pretend to over election in, 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 uh, in the country. And that's why I want to agree with INEC and the position of INEC in this regard remains the position of the law. Yeah, beyond the position of the law, can we also look at the morality? If indeed um, uh, the law empowers you, does that mean that you could even appoint someone's wife as the umpire? I'm looking at the, 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 the potency, the context of that statement, not necessarily this case. Because according to PDP, they are looking at um, uh, this is someone from Owo. This is someone assumed 
to have a relationship but, with the governor. The, the, the truth, the truth is that at no time in in, in, in our elections, judging from our own experience, judging from my participation in the previous elections in the country, as a returning officer, been appointed people from the state where elections you know, have to be contested, not to talk of you know, the, the hometown of one candidate or the other. I think it was just an alarm. So of course, the media have been part of part of the electoral process, and I don't think there has been any time that a native of a particular state is appointed by INEC and somehow returned as returning officer in an election. It is not done, it has not been done. So I still consider this as an unnecessary alarm by the PDP. Okay, if you use the word unnecessary alarm, it means that there could be a necessary alarm, but in this case, yes, this is yes, good. Why they are objective is this when there are fundamental matters that may affect the credibility of the election, every political party has right to raise it, but it is not good at this time to begin to raise information that are found there that can heighten the political tension in the state. You see, when you talk about the timing, when you talk about the stage, uh, listening to what the governor of Wondo State uh, in his response to this allegation, even accused Governor Makinde of um, jumping the gun that the returning officer, as at that time, had not been announced. But yes. is it wrong? Because from what he said now, the, 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 the suspicion or... Uh, all the speculation came to be because the man has now been confirmed. So let's look at the fact that, oh, maybe he has uh, privileged information to know that, oh, the returning <laughs> officer is going to be this be, man. Being the governor does not give Governor Makide any privilege above every other citizen and stakeholders that are participating in the electoral process. Femi, let me explain he what I meant. Let me explain what I meant, Femi, please. Sorry, let me explain what I meant so that you can... participating in the election. Femi, sorry, let me explain what I meant so that you can help me clear this air. I'm saying that he said that he's going to be the VC of OAU that will be the returning officer. As we speak, the VC of OAU has been confirmed as the returning officer. I'm now saying that his information was no longer speculation. It's confirmed. That's what I meant. Well, yeah, but like I said, it's within the power of the inner to determine who will become who you are going to be part of that in an in an election. And this aspect with the, the constitutional issue is the power given to the commission by INEC and I don't think it is within the power of any political party to determine who okay. becomes the turning of China in an election. I, I think I like your consistency. Let's look beyond the uh, Ondo now and learn some lessons from this uh, 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 what you tag unnecessary alarm. Now, part of the things I next said is the fact that uh, the coalition is going to be being live on many TV stations. In other words, these cannot be manipulated. And also, yeah. he explained that whoever is the returning officer, there is going to be oath of neutrality that will be taken by them. But yeah. beyond this coalition, is this a suggestion to us? that there is usually no human factor in election rigging? There has always been a human factor, especially at the first moment that we are trying to improve on the credibility of elections in the But I think we should begin to appreciate the image for the various initiatives that are coming up. We were all there to witness, you know, the recently completed government election in the day and you want to agree with me that there has been great improvement in the manner in which the next, you know, conducts election, including the newly introduced, you know, electronic portal that received the job real time at the computer of polls from the various polling units. So this has limited human interventions, the human factors in, you know, determining the outcome of our election. And I think index should be commended for this. Okay, because uh, I'm sorry, I, I may have to remind you because I, I think I'm privy to the fact that both of us were there during yeah. the last uh, Oshun State governorship election. And yeah. you saw what happened. I'm not here to pass judgment, but you saw yeah, what yeah, happened correct. with the returning officer, keeping us, waiting for confirmation, speaking to some people that we don't know as we speak, 
So yeah. if people are expressing concern about the returning officer, like I said, we are not discussing Undo now. If people are raising yeah. concern about the returning officer, shouldn't we look at the merit and the demerit? It is necessary, but we, can, we must always remember that opinions, emotions, sometimes cannot be allowed to be superior to the law. The conduct of elections are guided by the law. If they are not guided by emotions or assumptions. And that is why we must always be willing you know, to play by the rule of the game. That is the law. Otherwise, if we begin to take assumptions and you know, alarms like this, or, or opinions, as the norm, then we will be approaching a situation whereby you know constitution is taken, anarchy is taken. So we must begin to impress it on index to improve on the credibility of our elections, but not you know, by trying to determine how it operates or how it conducts the process outside the dictates of the law. Outside the dictates of the law. I, I'm just uh, I'm quite interested in this conversation. For example, I. I, I there are provisions of the law that, ex that explain to us when the returning officer can declare someone winner. For example, you must have um, one quarter vote in to third of the area for governorship in all the local government. You must also yes. have a majority vote. Um, yes. But we've seen a situation where some of these things are set aside, like we yes. had in Oshu, and uh, you also look at the margin of votes. And this, yeah. when you look at the Electoral Act and you look at the Constitution, you see some bit of conflict. But like I said, my example is not on do, it's just a springboard for us to have this conversation. And yeah. like the governor said, we don't have to go to tribunal to go and prove these things. Why yeah. can't we avoid it? I'm speaking to us as political stakeholders now. How do we ensure that beyond what is written on black and white, because from what you said now, from the law, I yes. can the INEC can ap appoint a governor's wife as the electoral umpire. So how do we even look at the moral situation in this matter now? It, 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 yes, in that we are not going to subject that rule to the politicians alone. It's a collective responsibility of all Nigerians, particularly the media. You will agree with me that the advocacy of Nigerians, particularly the media of the society, are beginning to pay off. And you can see some of the decisions that our electoral partners, like the foreign mission, are beginning to take as, as, a, as an aftermath of the summit of elections, previously like the state of India and Diosa. So it is not a duty that was you know, subject in the hand of the political system, but rather a collective responsibility of all as Nigeria to demand for an improvement in the credibility of our election, to demand for an improvement in the process of our election. So it is a general responsibility. Okay, finally, let, let me ask you this. This is already turned into a conversation now uh, because. Um, uh, if INEC is saying that the process is transparent, if INEC is saying that uh, there is um, uh, a review portal for you to monitor the result, and we, for me, I think we are gradually looking at uh, electronic voting, and sometimes yes. we may not even need these human beings who could actually influence our result as a springboard we need to look at. For example, in United States election, you and I know that we, we have no business with anything called electoral commission. We are seeing the result popping up on our TV stations, yes. and we are seeing things changing yes. with little or no human influence. I know it takes humans to operate this system, but it's more of a giggle, garbage in, garbage out. So how, how do we avoid this kind of conversation by moving towards electronic process from start to finish? <laughs> the way forward, is by ensuring that we continue to demand for a review of our electoral law. We must understand that today that we are we're talking of electronic voting, we are advancing by getting to the point of using you know, electronic cards to vote. Now, there are permanent voters that will not ask our leaders for our election. Now, we must also make, to make further demands by ensuring that we amend our laws to accommodate you know, further advancement 
that will accommodate in the electronic voting system. This is one important thing we must continue to demand for us, Nigeria. And that is where we can get to that point, that our elections will go electronic and the credibility will have improved. So it's a continuous process, but we, must, we can only achieve this by continually demanding for a, a review of our electoral law. Thank you so much, Femi Lawson. Thank you for your time. We wish you all the best. We will Thank definitely you. keep a date with you as you also observe the process tomorrow and ensure you. that uh, um, you give us, as usual, authentic uh, updates on what happens tomorrow. Thank you once again. It's a pleasure. And to our viewers, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, I'll be giving my take on the two topics discussed today. Please don't go anywhere. The reduction of the 2021 allocation for the Defense Ministry, in my opinion, is not the right move. For years, we've battled the Southern Cardinal killings and now kidnapping, terrorism, killer headsmen, and more. More money should be allocated to that ministry, and that money should be monitored like never before to avoid some big pot belly security chiefs. Because a high number of Nigerians have died and are still dying due to insecurity-related matters. And in addition, I do not believe that this is the time to increase the allocation of the National Assembly when everybody is saying that there is austerity here. Even the president during his budget presentation speech warned of an even worse recession in the coming year. So why increase the allocation? But much more than allocations, the monies need to be regulated so that the purpose for which they are brought out comes to fruition. Year after year, we hear of budget presentations, but it seems like things just get worse. And as for on those stage, tomorrow is in the hands of the electorate. The INEC has expressed its readiness, but what about the voters? Their voters, tomorrow is another opportunity to choose your destiny for the next four years. Please, and I say, please, don't waste it away. Go out and vote without fear nor intimidation. And that's my take on tonight's edition of Plus Politics. There's going to be a live studio where we'll be looking at uh, the election in Ondo State. Join us at 8 a.m. where our studio will open live and we'll be looking at issues as they come. I remain yours truly. Coyote, Ladengde, saying bye for now.